Hello, greetings, this is Gilles Mancillon. I wanted to come uh, very briefly today to, to speak about uh, the most uh, humongous subject that can ever be discussed is the is the, um, the, the subject of philosophy. For philosophy is uh, is the very base on on, uh, on the quality on, on how we live. Of course, this is just a few little ideas on this monument or the subject that can never be uh, exhausted. Uh, in many sense, in early in my early life, when I was young, I was an hedonist, which means I was looking for the maximum pleasure with the minimum efforts. And then I opened myself to the spiritual ways, and so the, the way of spirit, the, 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 the divine way, and so I had to change and re a lot of things within my life. Uh, in essence, there are two great currents in philosophy. There is Eastern philosophy and Western philosophy. The way I, 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 I awakened to the spiritual path was the um, in in in. in um, was in uh, uh, Eastern philosophy. It was through the the, the I Ching, the the, the, the the Tao Te King, and the teaching of the Buddha. Um, for if you have not read this masterpiece of uh, of, uh, of poetry and literature and philosophy that, uh, of Lao Tzu, the Tao Te King, I recommend you do that. I'm sure it is available on the internet on audiobook. You take an hour. Of course, Lao Tzu does not does not ask you to practice the Tao, but he knows you won't be able to do it. What he's asking is that you make an effort to understand what he's talking about. Uh, but what I wanted to, to discuss briefly today was more uh, about um, uh, Western philosophy, for, for there are great schools of philosophy, starting with the Greeks, and, and then the, there is a German school, and then there is a French school, and then there are many other sorts of philosophy. Um, and of course, we cannot limit it in anything. For every every, uh, there are philosophies that bring men into darkness, and there are philosophies that bring men into the light. Um, from like Machiavelli can be really like the best example of dark philosophies, and Jesus would be the most uh, the high the, the, the philosophy of love and, and ascension. Um, so, uh, so in essence, philosophy is the, the pursuit of wisdom. Uh, in, in that pursuit, uh, there are two, two, two schools. There are those who are really looking forward to discover wisdom, and then there are uh, those who are, who are known as sophism, sophist, uh, which, which is a school that was known in Greece, and then in Rome, and then throughout history, and now even there is a lot of sophists. Those, people, those are the people that make their point of view, that presents their point of view as wisdom. But, but the, uh, which is not wisdom, but it's uh, um, and they use very, uh, very flattering rhetoric to, to make you believe that their point of view. It's the example of most politicians who will let you know that um, most politics is the, the, it is fairly well ex uh, exemplified in um, in 1984, uh, the book of, the, the, of George Orwell. Um, Orwell was a sophist. He was just trying to uh, to open uh, humanity's uh, mind to to those uh, those uh, energy of control. So, so in in essence, philosophy is supposed to free our mind. If something we say is true, that means we it is. Um, if we say something that is true, it will open our something. Will uh, Jesus said that it will open something within our mind, and our heart will, will expand as well. For for truth is liberating. Uh, as far as I've always approached philosophy from an intuitive level, which means if we d seek to discover true the, the highest wisdom, only God knows true wisdom. For for the highest wisdom is divine, and until we return to the the level of of God, we, we won't know the true wisdom. We won't know the the, the, the absolute truth the absolute beauty, the absolute goodness, those are things that needs to unfold within ourselves, but we have to trust that we do not know, for that is uh, Socrates' uh, foremost, um, foremost uh, uh, thoughts in, in terms of when acquiring wisdom, is to start with the knowing that you do not know, and then you open yourself to something else. The best way to do that is to remove yourself from the process and to trust your I am presence, to invoke wisdom from, from your I am presence, from your guide, from, 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 from your source, and then, uh, and then to allow, to, 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 to trust your, your vision center, to trust your, your heart, to reveal into your mind those, those ideas. Um, in order to, to understand philosophy, you need to learn to, to listen to things. Uh, there is a, a, a Roman philosopher I would definitely recommend, I don't know if you can find it in, in English, uh, that, um, that uh, wrote a book about how to learn to, to listen. It is a very short book, and, and his name is Plutarch. 
And then there is another wonderful, wonderful uh, book of Plutarch that also I'm not really sure if it's in English, but it's called The Tranquility of the Soul. It's about an hour, it's very short, but it's so beautiful and very um, um, enlightening. But for now, I wanted to, um, to, to speak of two philosophers mainly. Um, the, the first one is, is Plato. For Plato uh, in the Republic, it's Socrates um, is getting together with six other young men, six young men, five young men, and, and to discuss the, 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 all the aspects of society. In a sense, he is, um, and, and the most famous of, uh, part of this book is the series of the cavern. The cavern is the idea, just for those who have not listened to it, is, is the idea of a, a deep caverns that, that goes really, really deep, and, and there is a group of people that are enchained, facing a wall, and they cannot move their head. They have to look at this wall, and 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 they are uh, the, the only light they get is from a fire that comes from above that's been created by another group of beings, and, and the only thing they see are, are shadows uh, that are created with a stone and wooden object that other people are moving through the um, moving behind them, and the only thing they identify when they see a shadow of a of, of a rabbit, they say, oh, that's a rabbit. They see a shadow of a dog. Oh, that's a dog. And, and so the, those people have learned to live their life in believing that those shadows are the real thing. And so one of them one day is being detached and, 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 and they actually shown the whole process of, of this projection, this hologram. And in truth, it is, a, it is a metaphor for what Socrates was seeing as this world being a holographic projection projected from a soul level. He was just trying to explain it to, those, to, to his uh, to his audience, and so uh, so at first the, the the fire is really blinding him, and he's being shown all those objects and, and how it's work and how everything works and how the shadows are being projected. But it's really not he really doesn't like that. It was so much more easier for him to believe that the shadows were the real thing. Nevertheless, he's, uh, he's, he has to accept that this uh, that this is what it is because he cannot deny what he's seen. Then he's, he's being dragged in forcefully, and we, we remove it from the cave, and we he was thrown into the into the real the real life, the real world, the world of the, the eternal. It is a metaphor for the eternal life of soul and spirit, and so and then he opens his eye and sees the sun for the first time, and he's completely blind for days. He can only open his eyes at night, and he begins to see the sky. And he, at, in the daytime, he, he only sees the shadows, and he only sees the reflections of things in the water but slowly but surely he begins to see the, the, the actual the actual life the beauty of this world and, and eventually he realized he would rather be the most humble man in the worst job in the world here on this world rather than returning to the cavern and looking at those shadows but he remembers all his friends that were living in the in the cave and so he feels the responsibility of telling them what he knows now and so he returns down to the cavern, but he, uh, understanding that those people have given uh, all kinds of uh, attribution to, to, and, and glory to those who recognize the shadows, who are able to, to make the shadows um, important and, and, and to classify the shadows and all those things. So, but as soon as he returns into the, the, in, into the cave, uh, he, he becomes a threat to the public order. And, and that is the example of Jesus that wanted to, to bring this, this knowledge of the eternal truth of God to the people. And, and they were really not ready. They prefer their illusion. Uh, same thing as Socrates who had the same problem where he was uh, condemned to death for preaching those things. And so until, until humanity is ready to discover the, it's their truth, uh, the truth, then um, it is, it, they, will, they will stay within their level of consciousness. However, when the soul is, is, is becoming brighter and brighter and brighter, it is getting, getting closer to the surface. For, um, for we, we, have to, we, we have to understand that uh, uh, in, in the chapter 6 of the, of the Republic, uh, something that's quite interesting is to, that Socrates explains is that uh, an image is to an object what an opinion is to the, to, to the annoying. It means if, if you see a, a picture of a, if you see a, a photograph of a glass of water, it is not the glass of water, but um, 
and it's the same thing. If you have, if you see you have a knowledge, you present your opinion of it. So, so what is important is, uh, in essence, is to um, is to understand the, the the ephemeral nature of thing and and, and to realize that um, that uh, there is a there is a, there is a, always more to be discovered because we only see the surface of things and, and each and everything within the the the, the sensible world has, has great depths to be revealed once we are open to it. I also wanted to speak very briefly of a French philosopher named René Descartes. For a lot of people in France, they say, well, I am Cartesian, which means I, I belong to the school of thoughts of Descartes, which means I'm an atheist and I, I'm like real well grounded on the earth. But in essence, Descartes was trying to, to, to explain by reason that he proved the existence of God. So to him, he doubted everything except the existence of God. And he realized that all that is imperfect within him was already perfect within God. Another thing that he uh, that he thought was really important is that he discovered that the great wisdom can be can be found uh, in any common discussion. Uh, one not need to go into the, the the old text and everything to discover wisdom. For wisdom is accessible everywhere to whoever opens his mind and heart to it. Another thing that was interesting to to uh, to him in his in his discourse of the on the method. Uh, of course, he made a few mistakes because he, he was purely going from reasoning. So, so there is no, um, there is some mistakes. And when he started to move into medicine, he, he was a, a bit early to, for him to, to realize that. But um, in essence, he realized that animals were just as divine as uh, as human beings, and even may, maybe more divine because they never deviate from their true nature. So I thought that was interesting. I had to. I always had a, a bad impression about Descartes because uh, so many people would just use his name to say I, I do not believe in spirit. I don't need believe in spirituality. And so I had to read that that that, um, that discourse on the method. And so now I know what he was talking about, which is quite uh, uh, the opposite of all those people that are uh, actually believing their their. their that a lot of people have very high opinion of their opinions, and so uh, it is uh, it is very important to to always seek to to investigate all things to to before we can uh, we can um, assert it as a truth, knowing that whatever truth it is, it's only relative to whatever time and space we are living in. Because the truth, like I said, the truth, as far as I know, is uh, is God. Only God is the truth. God, but the truth can never be told. It is uh, otherwise God would not. It is far beyond words and language, and therefore it is only a projection of our thoughts and ideas in relationship to what we know or believe. Well, I hope this message was interesting for you. I, I'm going to pull out a few cards uh, just for the to know what will be the would be the highest wisdom for us today. And the highest wisdom is higher self. For the higher self is really the eternal part of ourself. That is the the projector of our life. It is the the guide and the projector of everything that is being that is made and that our life is and sometimes the higher self we have many parts of our higher self or even many higher self but uh, sometimes our higher self is um it is very quiet and sometimes it is active when it is active we feel really good when it is quiet sometimes we feel like a bit disconnected what we need to understand is karma we need to understand what what is karma to understand that everything is already perfect everything is already in place everything is what it is and so we only need to 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 allow ourselves to to disconnect from that matrix to get out of the cave to to remove ourselves from the old patterns and as we do that moving to the light here yeah. uh, as we do that we are um, we are able to free ourselves from this uh, f f from from this karma and we move into a creative flow and process what we need to do is the effort there is an effort that is required to 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 uh, to move out of the cave to move out of the the conditioning to move out of the of the old cycle and the highest wisdom that we can discover is the for today is what we can find for us is the pathfinder. That means we we have to allow ourselves to be guided by by this guide that is a pathfinder guide. And so this um, and and to 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 
to, to be led, to, to be led by spirit, to, to, to take one moment at a time. Well, I hope this message was interesting for you. I'm going to finish with a, a, a song, a brief song. Uh, I haven't really prepared anything, so uh, I'm going to sing one that I, I already know by heart. It's called You Are So Beautiful. You are so beautiful to me. You are so beautiful to me. Can't you see your everything I hoped for? Your everything I need. You are so beautiful to me. Like a dream, a guiding light that shines in the night, heaven's gift to me. You are so beautiful to me. Well, thank you very much. I wish you a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Namaste. <laughs>